Daniel is chewing on a match. He is working on an old tractor motor between his rundown house and his shed. Sparks are emerging everywhere. Daniel observes a van coming into town. Two female tourists hop out in front of the only shop. It's an odd mixture of cafe, store and tourist information. They meet Harry, the owner of the eco-friendly store. How are you going? We are fine, thanks. We actually are running out of petrol and we thought maybe there is a station in town? Oh, I'm afraid I have to disappoint you girls. We, we had a station, but that's bloody 20 years ago be now. The old owner drowned and the new one didn't have much luck either. Tourists dried up, you know, but we have got a top Aboriginal site just out the road. You should have a look. It's the bloody best site in the whole state. Even better than that one down 11 miles road. Harry points them the way to Daniel's shed. Daniel is waiting for them. We were directed to you because we have no fuel left. He does that. Sorry. Can't help. Need it for myself. We're desperate. How desperate? We'd like to pay $25. Not desperate enough. He finally sells the fuel for 120 bucks. One hundred and twenty dollars? Oh, they are just some tourists. My heart is bleeding. The town members meet in Harry's shop. They are afraid of confronting Daniel. Steve and I had an idea. We'd like to put it to you, the, the tourist thing, you know. All the tourists looking for fuel. It, it's great Daniel helps them out. That's, that's what we should do, but... We thought it might be a whole lot easier just to simply have a sign out the road saying no fuel in Clouds Creek. People are nodding. Daniel is motionless. The room falls silent. They look at him. He takes a pipe out of his pocket and lights it with a match. Yep. He pushes the door open and leaves a cloud of heavy smoke behind him. Harry sets up the new sign at the highway. Within minutes, Daniel removes it and now, unimpeded, continues ripping tourists off. Rose is Harry's wife. She had an affair with Daniel 20 years ago. She is desperate to stop him killing the town's reputation. You went too far. That piddling amount of money can't be worth all the trouble you are bringing to town. It's not a town. Just a dot on a tourist map. Harry and his friend Steve are trying to find a solution. Ah, oh, I wish we had a new petrol station. In the neko friendly town? Oh, bugger, I keep forgetting that, but what if we get a dozen cans of fuel on our own? I'll store them at home and we'll sell them for 30 bucks. I'm telling you, don't mess with him. He is dangerous. Besides, selling fuel without a license is illegal. Oh, jeez. You think they'll ask for a license? Hold on. Does he have one? A license? Does he have one? Harry's wife, Rose, holds a secret. 20 years ago, Daniel murdered the owner of the petrol station. You know, they have been asking questions about your past. There has been talk of going to the cops. Did you tell them? They want to check your license. But if you don't stop killing the town's reputation by ripping off poor, unfortunate tourist girls, then you leave me no choice. Daniel gives her a dark glance. Harry enters Daniel's shed. They fight and Harry is killed accidentally. Jesus Christ, Harry! Rose stands and looks directly towards Daniel, who is concealed behind some wooden planks. I know you are there. Daniel chews on a match. Confronted and desperate, Daniel kills Rose. He stacks the corpses in Harry's shop, dousing petrol everywhere, and sets it on fire. He is sitting on the street, looking at the sea of flames. 
townspeople approach and stand in a group. In the morning, Daniel is still sitting there, looking at the smouldering remains. A tourist family arrives. He turns slowly. There's no fuel in Clouds Creek. Thank you.